Hi, and welcome to another episode of Dealing TV q and I'm Mike, and I'm here with George. Hello. And uh, we're here to answer the questions that you have. If you go to www.dealingtv.com, there's a little form that you can fill out and ask your question, and we'll get you taken care of. So today, what we're going to do is because we've gotten a lot of questions on how specifically to open up a port on a router. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to walk you through and show you how to open up a, a, a port on a couple of our uh, more popular routers. Right. And this episode will be a little different format than the ones we've done before. This will be a lot of screenshots, and Mike will be talking through the screenshots so that it, you can go through it at your leisure and see what you expect to see depending on the router you're talking about. This is more of a how-to uh, episode than a, a, we're going to answer a bunch of questions. We're just going to lump all of the questions that we've gotten into one general question of how do I open a port on my router. Right. So if you hear something that doesn't quite make sense, just hit pause, and then you can go and open up the router browser, or the, the router control window and see if you figure out where you're talking about because the menu configuration screens look a little bit different between the generations because we're going to show both our what used to be our mainline router still is a big seller and there's a lot of them out there and then our latest and greatest router and we'll get to that in just a moment. So the the first router is our 802.11g this was our flagship 802.11g router this is our DI624 real popular router that we sold for a couple of years and um, this selling. one yeah absolutely <laughs> and this one has the same interface as many, many, many of our routers have had for for a long time. Right. About a year ago, we changed interfaces, which we're going to use as an example our DIR655, which is our latest 802 or draft 802.11n router uh, that's on the market. And it's light. <laughs> so if you look, you can see uh, on your screen that uh, the two interfaces look the same. It has tabs across the top and buttons going down the left-hand side. So the you There's know minor changes. You know the colors are different, and the colors are have went to an orange and brown color scheme like the boxes have, so that it's consistent across many of the products. For instance, the DNS three two three home storage device here has a very similar looking menu to the new style menu on the six fifty five. And the the DNS three twenty uh, three is our network attached storage enclosure uh, device. And we're going to be using it as our example uh, of how to set up a, an FTP port on your routers. We'll do an episode coming up that goes into detail on the setup you need to do on it to make it an FTP server. But it's just an example of a type of thing that might want a port open. you got all kinds of different devices like internet cameras. Uh, you got the storage devices and, and different items like that. Uh, Gaming, broadband right. video phones. Some game servers require that you open up ports. So this is a uh, basic way of how to do it. Right. So let's let's jump to our video. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to log into the router and then click on the advanced tab. Down at the bottom you'll see a bunch of pre-configured rules and all you need to do is click on the little edit icon that's to the right of that. First you want to enable the rule then normally you would put in a name but that's done for you. So then you just want to put in the IP address of your NAS device which in our case is 192.168.0.203 and then it uses TCP as the protocol port 21 and then schedule it always click apply and then the settings will be saved now the DI624 has been configured to allow FTP to the NAS device so that one's completely done the next device that we're going to do is the DIR655 so you'll log in same thing, click the advanced tab at the top. That will bring up the, the new look. So you just enable it from the checkbox, and then you select FTP from the application, uh, from the drop down menu that you'll see. And then click the little add arrows, and then you will select the IP address of the NAS box, and then click the add arrows. Then all you have to do is save the settings, and you're done. So it's really that easy on, on the new interface, is very, very. Uh, uh, Easy because we the straightforward even IP addresses and stuff are already in the drop down menu, so you don't even have to write that down or, or memorize it or anything. Right. Basically, the router knows what's out there because it's the one that gave the addresses out, and so it's going to have a list of addresses. So as long as the device you're trying to enable is up and running on your network, it should show up in the drop down menus. You'll see a probably a name. Uh, like D-Link with some numbers and then the IP address that's been assigned to that. So mm -hmm. you'll know that it's the NAS device or you'll, you'll know the name of the device that you've already put on. And so there are a lot of different 
more advanced options you can do with port functions and opening ports we'll get to in a further episode. We don't want to let this one get too terribly long. Right. This one is just a basic. There's some devices <coughs> that require multiple ports to be open or they require um, different protocols right. and different ports. So that's going to be an advanced one. So we'll do that in a, uh, in a future episode, just like we'll show you how to configure the FTP on the DNS-323 itself in a, in a future right. episode. And keep in mind that just because you've opened a port, it doesn't mean that you've now turned off your firewall, you're not vulnerable. All you've done is allow FTP access, it's just the port 21 access that's arriving at your router to go only to the selected NAS device. It can't get to your computers, your laptops, your gaming machines, anything like that. You're telling it, open this port to that PC, right. only, and that's right. it. And so it's a very controlled thing. You can also set up the schedule, as Mike mentioned. You know, by default, you do always. But if you want to, you can set it up so it's only allowed for certain times of the day. What if you like FTP access while you're at work? You want right. to get to your files you know, from at, that are at home, you know, while you're at work. So you can set it up from 8 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock at night, right. you know, a schedule like that. So there's a lot of flexibility and power in there. Each of the router menus has a help function, uh, typically still on the side, yep. which goes into a good bit of detail. Also on the support site, support.dlink.com, there are a series of frequently asked questions. And many of these types of issues are covered, at least sort of at a high level, in yep. those areas. Yeah, and, and we will be doing you know, episodes on, uh, on as, as much stuff as we can, as fast as we can. I know we want to get a lot of stuff up here, but, uh, you know, a little bit at a time, and, and we'll get there. And again, if you have any questions, go to www.dlinktv.com, and you'll find the little box there to fill in your question and send it along, and we'll try to get back to you as quickly as we can. Absolutely. All right, thanks. Thank you for watching.